My name's Kira. I'm 16 years old and I live in Derry. I'm in a lower sixth at school and I'm studying English literature, um, biology, French and history. At school, because I go to an integrated school, it's a school where it's not just one religion. There are Catholic schools in Derry and there are state-run Protestant schools. Um, my school is different because it's Catholics and Protestant and boys and girls, so it's completely mixed. So I suppose when we're at school we always hear both sides of the story. So we might have an assembly about Bloody Sunday, but we might have an assembly about um, the NSL and bombings. So I suppose I hear both sides. And um, growing up my dad would tell me stories about the troubles and what happened and you know obviously there were atrocities on both sides of the conflict. I think they do a bit because you can't get away from it. It's still it's history but it's recent history so people still know what happens. I think sometimes they don't really know a lot because for example like my dad works and sort of that sort of whole thing to do with the troubles. It's his job so I would hear about it more. So a lot of them would say to me, oh you're so political Kira or whatever like but <clears throat> they would know. I think it's just you're used to it hearing about stuff that happened. Um, You know we've all, we've all heard about like, Bloody Sunday. We've done about it in school and we did about um, the 1916 rising in school and stuff. It's just it's it's recent history but at the same time it's a lot of people don't really care because they weren't born. I think that it's good to learn about what happened in the past because it we can learn from mistakes that were made and I think if we're learning about what happened on both sides we'll sort of be able to make sure it doesn't happen again and grow up to be more open because we can discuss what like we're looking back with hindsight so we can see what caused those problems and how we can solve them and stuff so I think it's useful to help make a better future. Bloody Sunday is on the 21st no 29th of January um, and there used to be like marches for that and I actually went on a couple of them but you know with the, the inquiry and stuff and you know, the, obviously all the victims were pr pr no, the pronounced innocent, so now they've, they just have like a sort of memorial thing. But I was actually um, there in Guildhall Square whenever they, um, they read the reports, when the families read the reports, and um, they stuck their hands out the windows and started like waving, like they started waving the report to say, yeah, it was good and stuff. So, um... That was a good day. I got out of school. In school we have assemblies for all different um, days, not just Bloody Sunday, obviously we have one for that, but we have one for the Oma bombings and Enniskillen bombings. We also have one for Remembrance Day because the school likes to celebrate or commemorate both sides, both days for both sides of the, the conflict. I think all schools have their own commemoration assemblies. I don't think they're as into them as my school because my school has a big thing about peace and reconciliation and integrated education and remembering the past. It's a big thing in my school. Um, so like I don't know because I just have gone to my school you know for all of my secondary education so I would guess they would but I just don't think they have such big assemblies all the time. So we have, you know, Peace One Day Assembly, we have, you know, assemblies for everything, for all, like, Memorial Days. Well, Remembrance Day for World War Two, um, World War One, um, but I'm pretty sure that's, mm -hmm. nothing else comes to mind, really. My dad encouraged me to go to Ogo, but I originally was going to go to um, a Catholic all-geared school in Derry um, called St. Cecilia's. I can't remember why, um, 
but I think we just went and it just wasn't for me and then I went to um, open night at Oak Grove and to be honest I just wanted to go because um, in the home economics department they had uh, free cupcakes and they had trampolining in the PE department but looking back I'm really glad I went to Oak Grove because I think they're really fussy about all this you know peace and remembering the past but I think it's good because you get people from other schools and they'll come in and, you know, they'll come into our school and they'll just be all, what's that about, what's that about? And we'll be able to explain, well, this is an assembly hub to remember such and such an atrocity. And we remember it because we know it's good to remember the past, to learn from mistakes. And I think because I go to such a mixed school, I'm used to being with different people. So there'll be people from completely different sides of the community um, and I'll just be fine with it. I mean, a lot, I have a lot of friends who are Protestant and you'll get some people in Derry who will say, oh no, I'm not friends with any Protestants or, you know, I've never even met a Protestant in my life, which is probably not true because you probably just, you know, met someone from the Protestant community who doesn't know. But even, I don't know, there's just places, areas that people won't go. Like there, you'll get Protestant students from my school who'll say, Oh, I would never go into the bog side, which is uh, like a nationalist Catholic area, which is a side of a bloody Sunday. It's kind of just part of everyday life. I walk through there every Saturday and I just see them and I think, oh, that's some nice art skills. But it's I don't find them threatening or anything. I mean, you know, it's members of, I suppose, my community who painted them. So a lot of the murals that I see, I know the stories behind them and I think they're nice. I don't think they should be taken down because they're almost a part of the landscape of the place and you see all these tourist buses going around saying oh this is this mural and this is this mural and I think they're nice I think any threatening murals should be taken down but you know you wouldn't there's no as far like you know as far as I can see there are no threatening murals the murals that you see in the bog side are memorial murals for people who died in the troubles and I think they're important because they've been there for so long I mean the bog side wouldn't be the bog side without, you know, the you are now entering free dairy. And, um, you know, it's not saying it's it doesn't have anything offensive written up. I suppose maybe people might get offended, but they're not there to offend people. I don't think it does as such. I think there are some people who will, you know, who, who do know about it and it's still important. I think it's it should be part of my generation but not as a cause for bitterness and not as a cause for you know keeping the divides or divisions I think it should just be just to remember the past and look back and see how we can improve and say that was wrong that needs to be fixed or maybe we could have done that better but I think there are people who will still you know it's like it's important it is it's it's memory it's it's still it's history but it's still recent history it's still memory it's still our dads and our mums and our grandfathers and grandmothers and grandparents and aunties and uncles lived through it and I think it's important to remember it. Some people do do use it as, a, as an excuse to sort of feel their own hate and prejudice but I don't think it should be a cause for bitterness or prejudice or divide. I think it, we should just take the positives and try and, you know, don't mean to sound really cliched but heal the negatives. <laughs> Not forget, but sort of forgive and still still remember because it's important. I think people who say, oh, that's that was ages ago, I think that's wrong because there's still a lot of people who are hurt. And I think it's important to still remember that, but not in a hateful way. History and memories have been used to, you know, twist people and, and make them really bitter. Um, I think there's families that will you know, have, have passed on, like, the bitterness of their generation on to other generations, you know. They might say, oh, don't you ever, you know, marry a Protestant because they did so-and-so and your grandfather was shot and, you know, if that hadn't have happened or whatever. But I think politicians are guilty of it too. They, well, they were, not as such now, but I think it's been shown by the riots in Belfast, you know, with the whole flag issue. I mean, that was that was a lot of young people out and to be honest, you know, they, they they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't have any clear arguments, but there it was clearly an older generation was fueling that. And 
a lot of frustration was built up because of it. I think it's um, a, just a lot of factors that just causes that you know, unrest and, and anger. But I think memory, if, it, if it's you, it's a powerful weapon, if it's used in the wrong way, it can really stir up hatred, which is not, I don't think it's right. And I don't think it should be done. I think my generation's probably, some people, it's, it's just the same in every generation. Some people are very politicized and um, a lot of people aren't. A lot of people don't care. I think it just depends. I think th there are a lot of people, you know, in my school, there are people who will be politically aware of what they're doing. They wouldn't be politically active. I mean, at the age of 16, you're not going out and, you know, lobbying parliament or stormont you're going out with your friends i will vote because i think it's important to vote i think it's just stupid if you're not voting because frankly it's it's a right that you have and also you, it, it, it kind of it affects everyone i mean everyone has a say in what government and i think people who say oh i don't like the government or whatever i'm not going to vote but yet if they don't like the government they could vote to change the government or they could get involved themselves if they don't agree with political parties or any of the political parties. At the moment in school we're actually learning about the Second World War and the Weimar Republic um, and then we're going to move on to Irish history next year. I know some schools do Irish history first and then the Weimar Republic but we wouldn't really learn about it I suppose because it's something so that's a war that was really fought in Europe and I don't know they probably just